boy they are lovely 130 euros bargain that's a bargain i mean bloody me they're already heating up and it's like what like 10 seconds whoop whoop Hi guys, this is your boy Martin from martintheblogger.com slash shop. So the largest European shop for Canem Spider and Riker aftermarket parts and OEM parts. Anyway, Le Mans is back in action. I know one fan, one follower, one friend, Keith is going to be super happy because he loves that bike, loves that color. I love it actually as well. Anyway, what's today's video about? Today we're going to talk about these Inferno heated grips from Showroom. And yeah, well, we're going to do unboxing installation and a little bit of test uh just to tell you i have started to work with the uh, show chrome like directly at that time there it's just by coincidence of course uh <laughs> and the thing is what's the info for you is that i used to have show chrome parts big bike parts on my shop but now they're for amazing prices i mean these heated grips they are called inferno full plug and play option and we will do unboxing i would like to see the quality but 125 euros these days is just insane price so guys uh i guess enough of this short video no videos for for, for first 500 views and no bullshit around kind of let's get started all right now so let's do the unboxing all right good so uh wait don't do that all right so we have a uh, glue we will need it uh later on because you need to glue those uh hand grips uh remote control uh i think there are preset up level of heat you can use but i need to read more but uh, one two four five already options so hopefully they will be able to burn my hands good Cables, great. And this is what I'm waiting for. Okay. They are good. They are anti-slippery. Now feeling uh, extra info on size and the difference uh, between stock and, and these. So these stock, I, I call them like, we, or we can call them like softish and these are more like hardenish. What I mean by this is if you squeeze these, uh, they are really soft and most probably you, I don't know, most probably you have the same experience. This bike has only like 2000 kilometers, let's say 1000 miles. And they are like already like going or fading away. Uh, and we have more kilometers on other Rikers and they're just like, like they are, they are like, to, they are like to go in, in almost like no time. These are more like hot feeling. It's also like more, more plastic, more, more hard. And it's because the body. Uh, you need, they need to include that, that heating uh, pattern. They have goosebumps, so anti-slippery uh, area. For me, it seems like it's very hardish, so uh, they, it should least, well, definitely longer than the stock ones. Also, size-wise, they're a little bit thicker. How thick? Uh, these ones are uh, 3.2 centimeters. And these ones are uh, 3.7 centimeters, 3.8. Uh, I don't want to talk about inches, but the difference is half a centimeter, which is uh, 0 0.2 inches. So these ones are 0 0.2 inches uh, thicker than uh, uh, regular Riker ones. Now let's continue with the installation. Uh, in case you, by the way, you can see me in the mirror. Cool. So in case you don't want to follow my instructions, uh, Show Chrome has all the manual, how to operate the controller and how to install uh, it on your bike. It's, there are 15 steps or 14 steps and one like warning or whatever. But let's do it step by step first. Uh, T30 and let's just remove the end weights or mirrors in this case and we will need to also lose the uh, hand guards. Mm. 
Now all the time I'm trying to show you the real experience is what you can face and what I'm facing right now is that this mirror, can you hear it? Uh, doesn't want to go out and this one the other side went super smooth well this happened to me already on, on other Riker so they've been over tight from the factory and you can see there is a there's the bolt that expands this uh, okay so it's way too much expanded and doesn't want to slip out I still have hand guards on the other side and I was able to get this mirror out no problem so what I will try to do now I'll try to push this this bolt that is inside basically more inside so it's not that expanding so I'll be able to pull out the, the mirror finally ah have a look see what I was talking about ah. you see uh, not everything has to go according to plan not even for Martin the vlogger but at the end it's like how you do not break things and how you try to find solutions um, now what you need to do you need to remove the, the stock grip there is no glue really so either you will just pull that off in case you are able to or just use a blade to cut them okay I don't give a damn there you go Good. That was easier. Now what we'll need to do, we need to remove these three bolts so we can get into this and we can end mount uh, basically your, your throttle and your heated grips they will come with uh, as a right side or throttle side, it's this one with this, uh, I like to call these things ding-dongs as you know, so this plastic throttle control unit and this one is your left side without the, the ding dong in there all right so let's remove this this time t25 it's needed and very easy you don't have to like really remove anything much more and now just pull this off like this good and the same way you slide this new heated grip in there we go somebody's worried that you'll do something wrong you don't really have to be i mean you cannot put it in in any kind of wrong direction this pin it needs to be facing forwards and you know it will nicely sit in there and now I can feel like my throttle is back all right so I can control my my throttle unit or basically the speed of the bike now maybe tiny tip uh, in case you will be placing it back uh, you don't have to worry that you will not put it back correctly as it was before because here you have a hole and here is the tiny pin so all you have to do is basically find that pin There you go, and it would fit like the diff, the dimension, the position. As you can see, it will fit perfectly, so you don't have to mark where it was before. It will fit perfectly. There are no gaps, nothing in here. So now I can just tie the screws, and we are good. Do not over tie them. Just snug them. Now, there is a tiny difference between left and right side and as you can see I haven't removed really the hand guard because we have our warning lights there I just didn't want to do that and that's plenty of space for me Now, this side it's uh, basically side without any movement so we will need to apply glue so we will clean it before This one we will of course not apply any glue here because it's a throttle side Okay, so you want that uh, hand grip to be moving 
Before that there was no glue whatsoever as I can see because that hand grip they are rubberish and they've been sticking there quite well. Uh, this one it's kind of plastic inside so uh, because of the patent of the of the heating so we will need to apply a little bit of glue or at least I will do that uh, but it's quite tight to get them in so it's like 50-50 but I would uh, apply glue so let's first degrease it and do the glue there Now what I will do, I will use glue from here, most probably to here, and we will slide that in, uh, in two lines, most probably, nothing crazy. And what you need to kind of be careful, or careful, uh, this thing needs to be as close as possible to the controlling panel and cable, you know. Have a look how you have it on this side, where is the cable, and so you have the same rotation. Uh, so you have it symmetrical on one side and the other that's the only thing that worries me kind of a little bit tiny bit because i don't know i just need to have symmetrical things i don't know why it's just my obsession And I will help myself with the, the old throttle unit in order to put that in. See? Use and abuse. I guess today the hammer is the ultimate tool, huh? Now, what we will do, we will play with cables and this is the controlling unit cable. Uh, so let's that leave, leave that alone. Uh, we just need to grab the one that it connects to uh, to your battery, so let's do that first. This is not a difficult job. Uh, when unplugging battery, always unplug the, the negative side first, then the positive. And when you are connecting it back, always plug in first positive, then the negative. Now the unit itself has fuse, so in case something goes wrong, the fuse will blow out. So that's fine. And one more thing, when we are talking about plugging something directly to your battery, you might be worried that the unit will go nuts or whatever and it will drain your battery so you will be not able to start your Riker. Well, this unit is pretty smart. So inferno heated groups are pretty smart uh, because they will shut down, like completely down when they feel that there is, or investigate or find out when there is uh, below 12.5 watts, that's where it stops and actually i don't know how many watts but enough <laughs> to start your riker which is a great thing red goes to red black goes to the black so red it's positive, just like that. Always make sure uh, you tight the battery connectors because that's where the many BSS fault codes can come, so make sure they are nice and tight. Now we will need to remove the glove box um, and most probably this uh, plastic thing on the top. Removing glove box, four bolts here, 
you don't really you don't really need to remove the side panel just four push pins and not bolts push pins here and my top tip when you're buying um, heated inferno grips from from me do yourself a favor buy yourself a push pin removal tool it's super easy to remove push pins and playing around spiders or rikers it's about a lot of push pin removal and also uh, putting them back you know so uh, a lot of places are quite hidden and this way you just put the push pin in just like that push it back and you're good all right uh, and it comes with 20 extra push pins a little bit of promo here but the tool i cannot imagine really might work without and two bolts here one on this side and one on the other Now try to put it, move, move it a little bit on the side, a little bit on the side, don't break anything, just raise it, there we go, there we go. Ah, and if you have the USB charger there, don't forget to unplug it. Urgh. Now, this job, what's about to happen, is the job that I, I personally hate. Uh, this has nothing to do with this cable, it has nothing to do, well, it has a lot of things to do with these two cables. So, we have two cables here from our one side of the, of the uh, heated grips, the other side. And of course, you have also the, the controlling unit and from the controlling unit we'll try to get the cable to this area here so everything will be plugged in inside and nothing's going to be visible same as uh, as this power cable so it will go under the light all the way up here that's not not difficult all right now what's difficult is that i need to remove this push pin that push pin so the top push pins and remove this plastic cover and there are two stupid things about it first whoever designed like the cable should go through that thing and i'm cutting it on every riker you will see it in a minute uh should be really like really tortured to that i mean it i mean it so if the dude is watching or lady is watching whoever designed that i i hate you then uh, I really need to remove this plastic thing and it's also a nightmare to put it back but that's what needs to be done in order if you would like to follow these cables basically put them through and get them out through here plug everything in here and so we have as less visible cables as possible so first these two push pins and remove this plastic cover and guess what I'm using for this job Yup, push pin removal tool. There we go. Look, the cables are hooked there. Of course, it has purpose, I understand it. But they are hooked on this pin. And what I'm doing, I'm always cutting them off on all of my Rikers. Maybe it's barbarian, but I just don't mind anymore. So I will cut one side, and the second one I will show you when we will remove it bloody plastic cover so this is what I'm talking about these two pens they hold cables for me it's complete nightmare uh, it's up to you if you will keep it there and you will be fighting or if you will cut them trust me I did it so many times uh, it's all fine and I'm tired after so many installations. I'm tired of them Before we will start to connect the cables, uh, I will prepare myself the holder so I know like, how to play with the cables around and holder for your um, the controlling unit of the heat intensity so I would like to have it here somewhere something like this and 
course the holder comes with uh, with the packaging together uh, with the rubber uh, spacer Now my top tip here is, yeah, before you will really start to zip tying things, you never know what can go wrong basically. Uh, what I'm trying to tell you, uh, take all of the cables, so left, right, and controlling unit, uh, you can make any mistake, plug them together, I'm holding camera so it's quite difficult, plug them together, and also plug it to uh, the battery cable, that is right over there. Here, good. And first test it if everything works fine. And when everything works fine, then start to zip tie and you know tie everything up. Battery cable. Check to um doesn't matter which one, left, right. Right, check. Now let's try to test it. There we go. Awesome. Now it's a zip tie time. And uh, one thing, guys um, zip ties are not provided in the packaging. I said good price. They are, the heated grips are for the price. I haven't said that the zip ties will be part of the packaging. <laughs> Silly, I know. Anyway, so be ready for zip ties. And what I recommend to do, you know, use the existing big cables, zip tie there, so you have cables nice and tidy. Hopefully I don't have to really show it to you. Uh, here also use the zip ties, use the existing roots, and take everything underneath of here all the way like you have your cable from the battery port one thing here please I learned it on my mistake go this direction go where is your um, foot brake side never touch with anything this metal plate it's super hot and destroys cables <laughs> as I have found out so my tip is always go with the cables from this direction up all the way there. So let's play around a little. All right, so our battery cables, uh, they're going under this um, body part, frame part, under the light, below the cable, but on top of that, uh, another frame part, on the right side, or the side that where is not the throttle, and here I have hided it into the hole like this, so all of the cables, everything is connected in there, so, uh, and I have tested also the glove box, uh, if it can fit, it fits there perfectly, so that's all fine. Now, what we need to do, we need to return that bloody plastic right over there, put everything together and test it. All right, now let's test them. Oh yeah, I can, I can definitely feel. I, let me come to you. Okay, hopefully you can hear me, even though the engine is on, but I can definitely feel the grips are bigger. And this is something I'm used to from Spydex. I mean, just those 0.2 inches only, uh, or half a centimeter. It's a big difference. I feel much more comfortable. 
Now, let's turn them on. And the thing with them is that they will never give you full power uh, until you need to cross 2000 RPM because they can take quite a lot of juice from your battery. And so we will not do over 2000 RPM because it's rainy and uh, we just cleaned the bikes for weekend tours, but I'm waiting. But I can, I already feel that they are heating up. I mean, bloody me, they're already heating up. And it's like, what, like 10 seconds? On my spiders, that they cost 30 grand the last one with the bloody heated grips from BRP. Like already this heat, it won't be there. It, like in general, it won't be there. It will take ages to get. Seriously, this is gonna be nice. In the paper book, uh, Show Chrome has like, be careful, they can actually cook your hands. <laughs> Inferno, what else you've been expecting? Boy, hey, they are already hot. Nice. I'm just standing, right? I'm not even, I'm not even using, I will not get the full power. This is bargain. I don't even have to go further. Like hopefully, hopefully guys, you can trust me. Uh, they are nice. And if they say what it's written in the book, that they can burn your hands, which is a good thing, because you're not using uh, heated grips uh, when it's not cold or whatever, and I doubt that anybody is that stupid that they, they will basically burn their hands, but they're just beautiful. Now, last thing about installation, I have used, uh, I have used glue on this left side. Uh, you cannot, you should not use uh, riding, or you should not go for a ride for 24 hours, so let the glue sit. They recommend to heat up the, oh, I, I heated up them up a little bit more than they kind of recommend, just like to normal temperatures, so the glue can get the rhythm and start to work. And you should not like use the full potential of the heated grip for 48 hours because of the glue. I think it's over reacted a little, but I promised myself that not to give you some stupid tips. So. 24 hours no riding because you want that grip hand grip to stick there 48 hours not using uh, of those heated grips boy they are lovely 130 euros bargain that's a bargain they're awesome i have to ask them if they can make one for spider cheese man that's good that's very good